Hello, everybody. I'm Steve Peterson. And I'm Jack Hinkle. Welcome back to another episode of Chops. Jack, how you doing? I'm doing well. You know, if you're watching the video, you're going to see us be a little more sun-kissed today, <laughs> a little more uh, dis- disheveled in the hair region. Uh, Common t-shirts, com- right? <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Because this week, we just finished band camp week one. We did Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4. You know, Thursday feels good. Oh, my God. That's kind of nice to go home tonight and be like three-day weekend. Oh. Up. I, kinda, I don't know how we'll be feeling week three, but... Week one feels good. Oh, boy. Okay, yeah. So we, um, Jack and the other marching band directors have been at it. It is July 18th. So um, last uh, last Wednesday, we had a senior leadership meeting. Yep. And we talked about the season, talked about some best practices, did a little sharing it was fun. Right. It was Just fun two hours. Yeah, it was a two hour yeah. little thing. And then on Thursday we had new fresh we had new marchers that were woodwind and brass. They came in eight to twelve. And then and then that was optional for the seniors and upperclassmen to help help mentor. And then the guard and percussion were here eight to twelve. And then this week the full band was here eight thirty to four. We took a beach trip with the seniors. Oh, I'm sorry. We did take a beach on trip on Saturday. We live we live near Lake Michigan, like 45 minutes away, and there's a really nice town called St. Joe, Michigan. Yeah. And it's on a bluff. It's like sits up high, and there's a wonderful public beach, and there's a spray park, and they have. We had an anonymous donor buy pizza for the seniors. Dude, that pizza was. We, <laughs> we <were> Steve, <laughs> did, okay, we somehow we ended up with way more pizza than children, right? Way more. So Steve is like on the streets. <laughs> Of this beach, going up to, well, the uh, the ironic thing is that when we like were dismissing the seniors, we we're like, okay, now just remember, stay with the buddy. Remember, today's <laughs> not your day to, to talk to talk to strangers. <laughs> Steve immediately takes four boxes of pizza, hits up every stranger. You want some pizza? You want some pizza? Hey, we got some pizza. You got a box of pizza? That was awesome. And they, a lot of most of them took it. Yeah, I thought it was kind of funny. You were standing right in front of the pizza place where they I bought know. pizza. I know. <laughs> it, it, it was really good, though. It was so hot, and we good. found like a little shady spot in this park. And we, I don't know how many boxes we had, like 12 was boxes. a lot of pizza. And we just, we did kind of smash pizza. It was like heavy pizza, right. too. It was good. It was good, but it was a very hot day. Now, the kids, like most of the kids went to the water and to the beach. Some of the staff did, but then like Jack and myself and a couple other um, staff, we, did, we just kind of moseyed around. We went to a coffee shop kind of did that then we did have a staff meeting as a as a band staff at together. the south bend chocolate Fair company there oh my gosh oh, it but um, smelled so good in there the kids you know th- so it was a nice day of bonding for them be able yes. to do something fun and kind of like the last hurrah before band camp starts so yeah. um and we uh i hit up kill wins i don't know if you ever did that day i did i did the i you know what so i good. had ice cream i had a vanilla shake okay I don't think I've ever ordered a vanilla shake in my life. Was it good? It was incredible. <laughs> now Brian got a he wanted a chocolate malt, you know, oh, which yeah, is a yeah. little different. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you walk in Brian Brian Golden was cracking me up because we walk into Kilwin. Kilwin's makes fudge, it's homemade candy, homemade fudge, ice cream, waffle cones. It just smells like deliciousness. Yeah. But he like walks in, and he's like, Ow, I just got a cavity. You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's you know. It's where waistlines go to expand and teeth go to rot. It's, but man, you come back with a smile. Oh my gosh, it's good. So good. It's like really rich. Yeah, that um, was good. High quality stuff. So we did that and got home, and then we had a. Then we were back here Sunday. We had a staff. We have a number of summer staff that come in to help the marching band, and so we came in and did subs. Yep, fun pack of chips, cookies. Oh man! And I don't think you saw. Did you see me like? spill my food twice no in the band room in the band room really? on the floor what happened? Uh, those sandwiches you know they're like really slippery on the inside like the tomato is kind yes of watery. and and they're really tall and they're tall my I <laughs> it was it a four up. foot sub i got from the local grocery four, store four foot long not four foot tall but it felt like it but i picked up the sandwich i gave it the slightest squeeze and it just <laughs> inverted on itself and shot out everywhere and i was like this is and this is like with the new summer staff meeting us for the first time hi, hi i'm mr hinkle and i'm like really um challenged when it comes to eating food and then immediately after that i like tried to dip celery and ranch and smash my plate <laughs> on the ground i was not not going well for me so anyway steve this week 
We just came out of Bandcamp, so obviously we have some thoughts about Bandcamp, for yeah. better or for worse. And the concept. Simple. I know what you're going to say. I know what your next quote's going to be. Denton Sutherland just smiled, if he's listening. Oh, I wasn't going to go Denton. I was going to go... Oh, where were you going to go? I was going to go your your quote that you always use. Oh, why say many word? Yeah, when few word do trick. Some of the seniors are doing that back now, like call and response. Right. We have not yet shown yeah. them the clip this year, but we should. Simple. Simple. I would not call a marching band a simple activity. I would call it one of the most complicated activities that you can do. And if you've ever marched, listeners, you kind of know how this rolls. Like, giant metal instrument in hand on grass, moving for a certain number of counts at a time before you move to another direction while you're playing something, while you're watching a drum major, while you're trying not to get hit by a flag. I mean, there's so much going on. Complicated. However, I believe, Steve, Preach. that teaching it and learning what you need to learn can be a simple process. I believe. I believe. Now, is this a is this something that you've come to grow into? Is this something that you learned? Is this something that, that you set up? You're set up guy now. Look at you. He uh, knows the right where it is. Dude, I know it's going. We've to. talked about Frank Troik on this podcast. Dude, he would be a good guest to have on here. He would. Frank, if you're listening, hit us up. Um, he is a master teacher from Texas, and he came up here two years ago. And I know we've talked about this, but he just totally blew our minds, Sp- specifically my mind. No, just no, like no, everything, the way he taught, it just made everything see- seem so simple. It was so much just like, watch me do what I did. I mean, that man spoke very few words, but everything he said had purpose, was clear, and easily achievable. That was, that was baller. I remember at one point in that lesson two years ago, yeah. I looked at you and I like squeezed my nose and go, burp, burp. <laughs> like, I'm a bozo. I'm a horrible teacher. I've been this doing oh, this for so I, long. I remember probably the iconic situation that set up for me is that we had a he brought up some volunteers and he brought up a person that was a, per, a student that was a percussionist and he told him to hold a rifle like a, a color guard rifle that you would spin as a prop. Right. And do you remember that? Oh, yeah. And and so this boy who was a a great kid and very coordinated now. And so Frank was like across the room and he was like, okay, now squeeze, you know, squeeze the stock end of the rifle and like now push down. No, push down. Now push down with your left arm. Lift up with your. No, do that. No, no. no, Turn your wrist the other way. And And he's like, hold it at a 45 degree angle. So the bottom is three inches off the ground and your right hand should be three feet off nope you're not doing it right yeah, come on no get, i said nope. 45 degree i angle. said 45 degrees yeah. come on and so everybody giggled with that and then he said and then he just stopped talking he said watch me and he put his hands on the rifle something like that mm-hmm. and he said you do it good watch me you do it okay good now watch me and then he showed him how to spin he did show him how to spin and he said zero words he just said watch me yeah. and he started the spin and he helped the kid like do that by speaking very little. And obviously it's funny. And the kids were cracking up because it was like tra- tragic to watch this student try and hold that rifle the first time. Obviously, Frank was kind of setting him up to be uh, to fail to prove the point that like few word do trick. Right. Right. And the the crazy part about it is that there's a lot of teaching going on in the world that like d- that do that people do that they try and teach it by over explaining and and making it muddled where you can just be so clear and show as opposed to tell and i think in marching band that's like that is huge yeah and actually in so much of teaching so much of teaching it's it's i do we do you do right that's all it is so i have tried steve i have tried to be very simple this year in my instructions and in my comments and the goal is that we were just talking about this before we press the record button is that i i would like the system to kind of almost work itself right from year to year from year to year and from from day to day too like if the kids can like kind of guess where i'm going yes. because I, it's simple enough they can figure it out that's a huge win because they know what's coming next right. And, and that was a concept Frank talked about. He had these levels of learning, and that was like level five. Like you can anticipate what your teacher's going to do. 
And that's also something I noticed from teaching for, can I say I've taught a while? Yeah, I think now that you're off the like four to five year train, you've taught a while. Sweet. Okay. So after having taught a while, I feel like the kids like know me better and they know kind of how I roll and they know what to expect. And, and getting to that point makes like teaching so much easier, so much less resistance. Right. So Steve, that's kind of where I'm at with simple. Now you were talking to me because you want, you kind of enjoy the simple too. In mm-hmm. certain ways, but you kind of like to throw in your little zingers. Yeah, I think it's it was was is fascinating, like working together with the marching band and wanting to keep it simple. Like I I enjoyed that process. Um, some things that we worked on today and keeping it very simple, very minimal words, right? But then also I I have I feel challenged that trying to keep it simple, but then also trying to keep my personality. Yeah, I, yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Because, no, like, if you, if you have fewer words and then you have less personality or less augmented, you know, augmentation to each word or phrase or less, you know, nuance, you know, and I think teaching a, a band of over 200 kids on a PA system, you don't probably want a lot of nuance. That's not really necessary. No. But sometimes I know that our students have come to enjoy or expect some zingers or some, <laughs> not sarcasm, but some silliness. Come to expect zingers. Yeah. Right. That's right. Or, like, hey, where are the jokes at, Mr. P? Come on, let's right, go. Right. That's true. And so sometimes then I feel like it's. I feel like it's me, like we were just talking about this being, I was just talking to some students today about this, about being authentic. You know, we talk about that all the time because that, that simple teaching voice, like trying to teach the whole band at one time is not really my authentic voice, but to help the process, I go into that mode in name of, in the name of the process, but sometimes I just can't help it. Well, and if you're thinking about like kind of reading the room, yes. if you're teaching math and you've got 25 kids right in front of you, you can read the room pretty well. Right. When you're teaching marching band and you're in a tower that's like 100 feet away from the field and 100 feet up in the air, yeah, kind of harder to read the room when it you is. literally can't see the it eyes is. of your kids. But, um, I, you know, you're talking about trying to be authentic, and I wonder for our listeners – like I'm, I'm guessing we have some listeners now because you know we're kind of a big deal in the uh, podcast world these yes, days. Yes, we are. We're climbing the ranks. Plus one thousand followers on our social. Anyway, um, I imagine we have some listeners that only know you through the podcast, mm-hmm. through the reels. Yeah. What we it would be a fascinating if we like live streamed a rehearsal, like <laughs> mic'd up, Steve Peterson mic'd up <laughs> at the town. Don't want to be mic'd up. <laughs> He's like, I will turn <laughs> my keys immediately if I have to be my <laughs> up. That would be the end of me. Gosh, that would okay. That would be so fun. Band director mic'd up. Yeah. Well, you know they do those. Um, they do those shows. I forget what they call it. Like the NFL, like summer camps. They they follow it. I think it it, it has it's um. Forget what it's called, but they follow like an NFL team, but it's all mic'd up. Okay. So you're like in the coaches' so, meetings. So you're you're, like you're the there. Wife. You're there. You're like, and you're finding out about the contracts and about the family okay. life and about the injuries and the the, the playmakers and the success. St- Steve Peterson mic'd up. That microphone would break in about twenty seconds. I about broke it today. Oh, <laughs> oh, in Goy. No, well, wait. In here, I actually kind of put that thing on yellow. Oh, alert. this the indoor yeah. mic. It went. It shut down for a second. Um, I listeners, it. we had our yearly bubble gum blowing contest oh. today. That is probably the loudest <laughs> that room B one three five gets ever. We have every year, it every gets... year, and Steve just blows that thing <laughs> up. He's got his jam track going. He's like playing stuff. I mean, he's you know this is ironic. We're talking about simple, and we're talking about how you like. Or wild man yep. when you teach, but that's simple for Steve. That's kind of how yeah, he rolls. Yeah, um, that would be fun. But Steve is talking about trying to keep his personality as he teaches, right. and and Steve teaching jazz one. We were talking about this. Looks very different than Steve teaching the marching band because it right. has to be. It right. has to be. But trying to find that balance. I mean, I I could see how that would be a little different. Right. Well, let's go back to the um, cruise ship speedboat. Ooh, right. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if you um, 
one of our former colleagues used to talk about that about you know like marching band a large group of people it'd be interesting to like bring some football coaches on here because some you know they have like almost 100 people on the team that's true right and you know they they orchestrate their practices all across you know their fields and they're rotating all the time and but it seems like you know large group of people um, maybe it would be interesting, too, to think about school administrators and about their staff mm. and also business leaders. But, you know, the, the, the cruise ship. And when you're on the cruise ship, you want to make sure that the boat, the, the vessel is safe. You want to make sure that it's working well. It's tidy. But you for sure want to control the speed and the navigation. Yes. And you can't. It was interesting because my wife actually said this. She goes, if you're driving the crew, if you're the captain of the cruise ship, you can't be concerned if the, like the stovetop is messy in the galley like that. You got to you got to make sure the ship is going forward on the right tack. You can't be messing with the officer's brass buttons and making sure the forks are aligned like you. You can't do that. Yeah. Right. But so. You know, the good thing about like a large boat is once it's going, it does have momentum, right? And there's a lot of power moving yes. it and there's a lot of stability and there's a lot of activity, but it's it's just moving across the yeah. water. And then but then you think about like um going to jazz one or jazz two or three and you have twenty kids to twenty five kids that you can dr drive it like a speedboat and kind of whip it around. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, it seems like more kid equals speedboat, less kid. I'm sorry, no, more kid equals right, cruise ship. Right, fewer kid equals speedboat. Like that's kind of how the majority of the time that would work. Yes, you know, I'm thinking back to you just running rehearsal today, like at the end of the day. We yeah, we um we put all of our first production production on the field this week. We painted 18 charts, and we haven't had a ton of time to kind of run them and practice them but today we did like we had about half an hour at the end of the day we actually put some music to our feet that was yeah. cray cray yeah kids some of the kids were cooking yeah but it was like very simple and steve was already like prefacing this process of like okay 18 counts set they go stop adjust check the ground back up take it back Okay, say same thing. Same thing. Only better. Only better. <laughs> Set. But and so that comes from Frank, right? Yes, that's all from Frank. But it's simple, and and you're not. The kids are smart. Like yes. the kids are smart. Ninety percent of these the mistakes that they'll make and that they'll fix themselves. Right, because the first time that we did this thing that we call the big beast going to the little beast <laughs> it's like five concentric circles that squish in on each other the first time that we did it it looks like the kids just got thrown there from outer space that was horrible right yes that was, was awful i think we lost kids we but then <laughs> but then like the second time we did it we didn't even tell them to do anything we just said just do it again do it again and then it was like kind of recognizable yes and i think we did it like four times or something yes and and it's it's simple because they know the process Right. If they understand the process, they know how to do it themselves. I mean, I was up there with you in the tower. I would have said most of the time I didn't need to be doing anything, right. which is like good because that means the process is working. Right. Brian Golden likes to talk about the dentist. Yeah. Right. And for those of you that uh, choose to go to the dentist, yeah. the majority of the work is done by the hygienist. Right. She right. cleans your teeth. The dentist just comes in and goes, OK. Uh, pretty good. Yep, stick your tongue out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. You drink a lot of coffee. Good for you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, and then you're good to go. So the the dentist does like very little of the actual work unless something needs to be done, right? Right. We're just there to check up, see if it's okay, and that's that's kind of how we're we're heading in in terms of working because the process is is running the band, not the directors. Ooh. Ooh, the process is running the band. Which means the so, band's running themselves. So why do we need to be there? Health insurance. There we go. Health insurance. That's, That's it. it. That's it. That's the goal, man. Simple. 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 Well, and then also, you know, Brian Brian Golden also says this is like he um seems like 
three or four times a year he'll say, I'm just I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be more direct. Like, you know, he'll come back and say, it's like, there's only, like, this is funny. He's like, you can either play louder, softer, longer, shorter, slower, faster. That's all you can do. So don't like try to overcomplicate, uh, overcomp- yes. complicate things. He's just like, slower, shorter. Try it again. Right. That's all you need. You don't need to have a dissertation about what an accent means. You, you can help them figure it out. Okay. I'm going to talk about lesson planning. If any of you um, just vomited in your mouth, I'm sorry. Yeah, because school's we coming up. That was good. Hey, yesterday you were like, kids, the S word's going to happen. And, <laughs> and they were like, shh, stop, stop. Okay, when we have the first day of, right, that was, yeah. Um, okay, this is actually a good thing about lesson planning. Um, where I went to college at Butler University, they talked about objectives. And when we made objectives, every objective started with, the students will demonstrate understanding. Yep. And my professor, Dr. Demick, she was great. She made a point to say, you can't say the students will understand because that's like fake. That's not real. Oh, like you can't, yeah, that's you like can't know that's if they head. understand yeah, or not. Like yes, it's in their head. It's fantasy versus reality, right? And she always said, you have to make your objective say, demonstrate understanding. If they can't demonstrate understanding, you are not checking for understanding. They must demonstrate it. Therefore, everything you do in class must be able to be demonstrated. Mm. So keeping something simple, demonstrate. Students demonstrate. Students perform a task. And that doesn't that's not like a band thing. I mean, it definitely is a band thing, but that's not a band only thing. Right. Any any part of school can do something with that um, and it goes back you and I were talking about this yesterday and you told this to the um, to our staff in the staff meeting you said like remember that just because you're saying all the right things to your kids doesn't mean it's happening right if you tell the the flutes to play forte and accent that's great but are they playing forte and are they accenting and you have to keep coming back to that stuff and that's that's like why simplicity is so good, because once you get that process going, you say whatever it is, have them do it. Right. Do they do it? Right. That's teaching, man. That it is. That that's is. teaching. That's going. That's good. I've talked to you about recently that like I don't think a lot when I teach anymore. You know, I it, everything has felt a lot more streamlined lately. I remember my first, like my first year, mm. my second year, I was like constantly like second guessing myself of like, what do I say? What do I need to say here? Am I saying this correctly? Is this person looking at me? Are they on their phone? Is, do they have AirPods in there? What time is it? I'm like, mm. wait, what? Oh, okay. It's been 10 seconds since they played and I haven't said anything yet. I mean, right. that's how it went. Yeah. But now it's just like once, maybe it's because I got my own process. I don't know, but I just like, I just kind of go. Right. How do you feel the kids do with that? Well, you mean like with what I say? Yeah. Th- I mean, how do you, how do you get through how do you get through a two hour trumpet sectional and doing the process like that, like doing Frank Troika style? With and then like how do you change that up with bringing in a little bit of personality or diversion or um, yeah personality. That's good, Steve. That's a good thank question. You, That's you. good. I am setting you up today. I know. I'm going to be I'm better like about Caitlin that. Caitlin Clark likes throwing you the dimes there. Okay. Dang. Indiana Fever. What up? Whoop. It's a lot easier with the smaller groups to like have those zinger moments. Yeah. I, I'm getting dis- I got distracted quite a bit in like fun, easy yeah. ways with the kids or whatever, and just like I, I'm trying to allow myself to get into some authentic moments. Right. Just like whatever that may be. And right. And there's a lot more individual attention. I'm 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 wanting to be more intentional about giving individuals attention in the small groups. Yeah. Because I want to hear how those kids play. So I'll do that and we'll like maybe we'll go down the line with stuff. And I don't think it's like stressful, but like having each kid play. And then sometimes a kid will play something a certain way and then I'll make a comment and they'll go again and something might not change. Then I'll I'll say something funny, okay. lighthearted to kind of relieve the tension from said kid. And usually other people laugh. And then there's some inside joke about it. 
So there's some, oh, I know what I did. I said, um, I was getting on the kids for going to set. I know that's shocking to you. But just the kids have to snap up to their playing position. We call that set. And Steve and I have been doing a lot of, try that again this yeah. week. Cause Jack's word today was, you got to be snap-alicious. I've, that's that's what I've been saying to the kids, snap alicious. Right. And I told my kids when they came into the sectional, I was like, no, like you got to be like the student council of set. Yeah. Like you have to be the leaders. Yes. I said you have to be the presidential cabinet yes. of set. Yes. And then one of my mellophones was like, can I be the president? <laughs> and I was yeah, like, of course the mellophones. Yes. Would say that. Yeah, the mellophones. Yeah. Yes. So I was like, I like it. So like that be kind of became a joke that this this kid is the president of the cabinet of set. Yes. Just it's stupid, but right. like no, sure. authentic moment that uh, that came out because of a yeah. kid, not because yeah. of me. Okay, so that's a good answer to that. Well, well, well answered. You know, like you you have the you have the moments of the process, and you it's very minimal and it's very um, objective. Do it again, louder. Try it again, slower. Try it again, shorter. You know, whatever, yes. and do it again. And then you know you do a series of reps. And then you may say relax. Right. Yes. I've been doing a lot of the grab a drink, don't talk, or I do grab a drink, talk to your neighbor. Yes. Yep. I've been trying to be more intentional about yes. that too. Uh, yes. So, okay. I, I, I've seen you teach quite often yep. for like the last 20 years. I think recently you and I teach in a similar way. We do. In the, in the set, standby, blah, blah, yep. blah. Do it again. I would be fascinated to know who are you teaching, by the way. Who do you take in your small group? You take clarinets. Yeah, clarinets. Okay, so like when you're working with just the clarinets, twenty-eight clarinets. That's the small. Group. Just enough. Okay, twenty-eight clarinets. What What's your jam? Do you do like a little bit of the the yeah. Mr. P show with the screaming pumpkin, or? Yeah, okay. well, um, like the last the two days before today, we did like um, water cooler awards. Water cooler. Who had the best one? Yeah, so we put them on our heads. Like in, like everybody did it, all twenty eight kids. And we just put them on their head and we try to balance them, okay. which are totally hilarious because then the Stanleys fall and it sounds like Ding! yeah, Ding! right. So then um, and we we just kind of mess around. I don't know how we started, but we put them on our head and then we um, then I usually say like um, best um, design, okay, um, hippest color, you know something Check. like that. Um, nice, um, ugliest, and then like most um, you know um, streamlined or something like that. Um, but today's um, change up was like we we did some marking in our music with numbers and letters and a bunch of stuff, and then we did play the same chunk of music part one. And we were trying to get that with the step offs and just where it was in the music. But then um, there was a situation that had come up to me about <laughs> leadership. Okay. Okay. And some people in the section had questions about. They were trying not to expose certain people, but they, they kind of felt maybe some things that were going on in the name of leadership were not done correctly. That never happens in high school. No, it never happens. I'm Weird. like, well, good. We're back in high school, kids. <laughs> and this person was very discreet and like very kind about good. it by saying, I'm just not sure that's the way we should be talking about leadership. And that's not what leadership is. That's not how you talk to people. And But she didn't want to be singled out. And she didn't want, you know. So anyway, so we had an exercise like every... 10 minutes we'd stop and break i'd said okay let's i had um this whiteboard or this electronic board and we put green words up there and those were the positive attributes of leadership okay okay i remember you talked to me about this in the tower yeah and we built that up and then i said and then let's go ahead and put the red terms up there you know the 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 anti-leadership what would that look like and i so i was it was a lesson within that had nothing to do with music but it had to, everything to do with kids but it was also kind of served as a brain drainer oh, perfect because like the i was like give me characteristics of leadership and the hands like shot up they were like i mean freshmen to seniors were like all over that you know and they were putting them in there and then we did the opposite and then we just i i chose to talk about a few like the i thought the biggest one that was appropriate to the situation I was talking about was selfishness versus selflessness. Mm. And are you doing it for you or are you doing mm. it for the other person? Mm -hmm. Are you doing it because you're big cheese now? Is that where you're doing it? So people look at you or are you doing it because you actually want to help person over here get from step one to two to three? 
Were there some aha moments in that? I followed up with the student that I had had a conversation with, and she said that was very helpful. Nice. That's a win. Yeah, so that was kind of a, um, what do we call that, like an Easter egg. You know, it was kind okay. of like wrapped. It was like a hidden gem. But it worked as a brain drainer, but then also kind of helped us talk about leadership vocabulary. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like funny, I'm sure, but I'm sure there was a couple zingers in there. Yes. Um, but... Okay. Oh, there, okay, it was funny at one point. I'm not going to say the student's name, but I don't even know if they listened. But when we talked about positive attributes, passive aggressiveness came up. <laughs> That's a positive? <laughs> that is epic, And I was dude. like, um, okay, let's back it up. I said, I think you're probably on to something into your mind that you think this is landing. <laughs> Let me tell you what passive aggressive is. It's like when I, you know, I'm like, we don't want to use passive aggressiveness as a leadership. So that was actually a good moment too, because it yeah. was a teaching thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um Yeah, but then gave them some silly examples of how to be passive aggressive and how I said, Isn't that obnoxious when you have teachers that are passive aggressive? Like and I'm like, that is so crazy. Like, isn't it obnoxious? <laughs> you guys I think mean, that- when you, you know those teachers. <laughs> I mean, just you know. You guys you know. are smart. I mean, you're like the smartest, aren't you? You're the band kids. Must be smart. Whoa. You know. So yeah, we talked about Scared. that. But so um that was personality, like the water coolers and then the leadership. I mean, but part of it is too, I can't go over the same sixteen measures. Oh God, no. I mean, we're gonna no. be doing this until late fall and yeah, it's like four months. I mean, you can't I mean, you gotta, you gotta keep the, you gotta cook the culture. You do not just the process. Cook the culture. Got to cook the culture, but you know, it's a, you gotta get the notes and rhythms going, but you also gotta give the kids something to chew on. Yes, and give them a reason to giggle. Yes. I mean, Gay Burton, I remember used to say, "You gotta have a belly laugh a day." Belly laugh a day. Right. That's that's true. You know, it it is interesting. Like, I think. Um, I've started to incorporate move. I know I talk about this like every episode. Incorporating movement more into okay. the oh, classes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously marching band movement, duh. But in the sectional, when we stand still and play, I am having the kids move a lot sonically, so they can listen to other people, but also getting to know each other. And I I'm in doing a lot of your thing. Like, okay, hands up, hands up. Okay, leave it up if, and then I'll ask the question. Yeah, and yeah. You know. And I'm just trying to do this a lot. So it's not just playing, but a lot of talking. So it's still like simple. Yeah. It's simple stuff like hand raising, whatever. But there are like varied activities within a two hour music block. Yes. You know, so stuff like that. Also, I've been getting really served up this week by the construction going on in our BPAC lobby because there are like funny sounds. There's like dudes walking around with headlamps on all the time while kids are like, I'm just playing my mellophone. (laughs) (laughs) There were like thuds happening in the ceiling and the kids are standing like quietly and it's just like, (laughs) the kids all look up and one kid goes, they're in the fence. (laughs) And I was like, that'd be pretty strange if like a body just fell out on the floor right now. And like the kids are like totally losing focus, but it's fine because it's like that stuff's real. So there's just like junk going on all the time. But it's like you can choose as the teacher like you are in charge. You are in control. Do you want to like go with the grain? Do you want to go against it? Sometimes you got to go against it. Like I'm sure that that same situation can happen in October when we got a competition the next day. I know. The kids are like, they're in the vents. I'll be like, will you stop? You are at standby. Stop talking. Be still. Stop it. Set. No. Stand by. No. Do it again. Set. Trumpets. Trumpets. <laughs> I'm sure that will happen. It I'm will. sure. It will. But, but like today, it's July, so we can go with it, you know? That's yeah. that's like so, that's oh, so. Oh, yeah, that, that's good. No, that's that's fun to make deer in the fence. Well, I thought maybe a, a student served me up today because when they said um, one of the red words, like for um, leadership, they yeah. said distracted. And I was like, oh, no. You're like, are <laughs> you talking about, hey, look, it's great. <laughs> You know, I was like, that's a very good one. Boy, that's a nice water that's a nice water cooler you have. Wow. Hey, hey kids, let's put hey, our water coolers you know, on our the, heads. The, fl- <laughs> yeah, the flutes made pudding bars today. That's a nice water oh, igloo. That pudding yeah. was so good. Woo! Uh, no, but I mean, you gotta you were just talking about this. You gotta be you. Yeah. And the right. kids the kids know that stuff's gonna happen. The kids know I'm gonna do weird stuff yeah, too. Yeah. Like they know. Yeah, you gotta you, I 
I don't know. I don't know. I guess two-hour sectionals used to concern me as a young teacher because I'd be like, how am I going to keep this going together for two hours? Uh, it doesn't really – No, it goes pretty quick, too. Um, I think one one thing that, you know, before – long before Frank, but one thing that I put into my teaching um, – portfolio or i just noticed like for those of you are, that are into like marching drum lines watching them rehearse they you know they they're in a set the drum lines in a set and then they're like you may watch them outside warming up and they'll do like the same repetition 10 times in a row they will they always do and they don't move and they tap it off like da, 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 da and they play it again mm-hmm. and then the instructor like lets them play it 10 times yeah at least. and then and then they stop and i remember like when it was a, a long time ago but i would watch like ben ronkel the drum instructor here at the time he used to do that and i was like well, how come i'm not rehearsing my saxophones like that so i kind of did you get into, into that. that yeah less less words and just like doing a lot of reps before we said anything but you, you know, we, you and I both do that too. About the if we're looking at a new section of music, we give them three, three runs at it. Yes. To yeah. kind of get the oopsies out. Sorry, I'm like doing this because I'm thinking about today when we tried Big Beast. Yeah. At the end of the day, after we already tried it, and kids are biffing, but they just they do the giggle thing, and they're like, they're, before you say adjust, and they're already like five yards off, and they're like tee hee tee hee tee hee, and then like sprinting back to their real spot, and you're like, no. <laughs> you said it. You said it just like a disappointed dad. You were like, "No, we're not doing that. No, go back." <laughs> there was this. There was this like circle of like mishmash circle of, of shame that was like, yeah, a good five seven yards off their set, and they're they're supposed to keep their eyes up as they try to get back in the form, and they're all like, kind of had like this saggy posture and like sc- they were like scurrying to their set. We're like, no, no, we are not going to start that tradition. No, no, no. no try it again. Try it again. We're not doing that. But that's that's the thing that I want. I want eradicated. I don't care if you mess up. I don't care in July. I don't care. Can you just mess up while doing the process? Don't mess up the process. Just mess up. Ooh. Don't mess up the process. Don't mess up the process. You you can do that. You can do that because that's that's more important. Because if you mess up the process, I don't want your product. Dang, you ain't, ain't going to get no prize. You ain't getting no prize. You only get... No prize! Only getting pain. Yeah. Oh, pain? Oh, I think pain is like doing something with no process. <laughs> right? <laughs> is that true? I mean, can you have pain? Yeah, you can have pain. Oh, in process. yes, you, you can, can have you pain can. in process. Yeah, I know. Okay. No. no, I think prize and pain are the two out two outcomes. It's like right. a it's like a, a fork in the road, Ugh. right, right. Yeah. No. Man, we sure like got we got into a lot of different things talking about something that was simple. But the point is that complicated things can can be achieved through simple manner, through right. simple tasks. Yeah. The quote is, "It's simple. It's not easy, but simple." People have explained that to me, like with jazz. This is a simple concept. Swing's a simple concept. It's not easy, but it's simple, right? That's true. It it is it is good to try to take something that's complex and make it simple, because it, we've all been on the other side of the fence where you take a complex or you make a simple thing complex, right? I mean, we've all done that. Yes, right. yes, we have. And marching band can be oh. done so easily as very complicated. Very complicated. Very complicated because there's so many moving parts, literally so many moving parts. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But simple is the way to go. Simple is just, ew. oh, here we go. Is simple just scaffolding? Yes. That is so buzzword, dude. You just went academic on us i'm jack Inkle. is that just scaffolding wink wink to my administrators get more pay is that what you're doing 
<laughs> I think you're you're well. You are my boss, so if you want to roll with that, I am fine with that too. No, that is scaffolding. I don't know. Some people are like, ah, scaffolding, whatever. But dude, I, think, I love scaffolding. I, I think scaffolding is pretty. That's cool. pretty hip, dude. I uh, wish I got into that sooner. No, that's that's what the whole thing. That's what the whole. That's what the whole marching band process is, is you're trying to scaffold. Oh, you want to hear my scaffold train from yesterday? Yeah. Okay, this is music-centric. I apologize. Okay. The trumpets have interlocking 16th note yes. rhythms. One group goes, dig a dig a dig a dig a and the other group goes, da dig a da dig a da dig a Okay. I'm sorry if that makes no sense, but okay. just roll with me. Right. When you put it all together, it just sounds like dig a 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 Okay. So I said, okay, say Taco Bell. I went Cameron Bradley on this. I said, say Taco yeah. Bell. Okay, now say Qdoba. Okay, say Taco Bell over and over. Taco Bell, Taco Bell, Taco Bell. Okay, you say Qdoba over and over. Qdoba, 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 Qdoba. Okay. Oh. First trumpet, say Taco Bell. Second trumpet, say Qdoba. Do it over and over. Okay. Okay, now play that rhythm. Play it. Okay. okay. Look at this measure in your music. That's how this is going to work. Oh, nice. So you had the Taco Bell and the Qdoba going on at the same time. Yeah, you know it was really hard to think of a restaurant that was a that fit that rhythm. Yeah, ah, Popeye, ah, Popeye, ah, Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> that's another. That's another one for Steve. Another one for Cameron, if you're listening. Yeah. So we'll see how that one pans okay. out. That music's hard. It is. We can do it. We got this. Okay, we're about at that time. That's about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we have Thursday night off, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yes. I'm performing again on Sunday. Where are you going to be? Oh, I'll wait. be in Indy again. Uh, I'm not going to come see you. Don't. That's Maybe. okay. It's the same set. Really? Yeah, I can't do a new three hours of music every weekend. That would be a little How, how do you feel about singing with just teaching a week of band camp? Actually better, because I feel like my voice is going to be in better shape. Oh, good. Okay. Does your voice feel tired now? It does. Is yours? My, yeah, mine feels <clears throat> a little raw. Trumpets. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Trumpets. <laughs> Trumpets. <laughs> I'm surprised at how many times my voice cracks. I'm like, <laughs> it only, <laughs> dude, it only happens when you're getting like jacked up. <laughs> you at 8:30 a.m. teaching Goy, dude, that is so intense. Okay, you need to do Father Abraham lower. It, it, the pitch keeps getting higher every day. I am back there. I'm, Father Abraham. I'm, I swear, dude. I'm like, <laughs> Father. Okay. Well, yeah. It's sorry about that. I am not. It's okay. A, I mean, I'll go for it. I'll go for it. I I just don't want to take it down the. I, you know, we got this. Okay. Okay. Well, if you like what you're hearing, check us out on socials on Instagram and on TikTok. That is chops underscore podcast, and then you can go to Spotify and Apple and YouTube and like us and follow and just all that kind of stuff, or throw some questions or questions or bad comments or something like that we we'll love them okay. yeah youtube come at us come on we got it we got it okay so for steve peterson and jack hinkle we're out of here yeah bye